Oh, I have to tell you, George, I am pretty excited. I've never been to a clown school before. Oh, just think. We get to see Pepe El Loco, the world's greatest clown performer. <laughs> this was the best school ever. And that was the funniest messenger ever. The elevator left without him. George decided he should take the stairs. The messenger clown dropped his bag and his hat and nose. Maybe the messenger clown was going to Pepe El Loco's show too. George could give them back to him. <gasps> A messenger! Thank goodness you're here. Why aren't you in uniform? All clown school employees must be in clown uniform at all times. Now, Pepe El Loco, the world's greatest clown, will be here in 15 minutes to perform his amazing show. But he'll need this. Ooh. It's part of the greatest clown gadget ever. But it's top secret. Pepe mailed all the parts to different offices so no one would know what it was. I need you to pick them up and deliver them to Pepe. George was excited to help Pepe. If he moved fast, he could pick up all the parts and still make the show. The next gadget part you need to pick up is on the fifth floor. This will help you remember. Pepe El Loco will be here in 14 and a half minutes! Uh -huh. <gasps> oh. The elevators are tricky. Take the stairs to five. You're on the third floor now. Huh, there you are. Pepe El Loco will be here in 11 minutes and counting. Now hurry up to the second floor and pick up the next part and make it snappy! <laughs> what took you so long? Pepe El Loco will be here in nine minutes. Your next pickup is on eight. <laughs> we only have seven more minutes. Any way you can do pickups faster? <laughs> Your next pickup is on four. Using his numbered fingers, all George had to do was count down from floor eight to floor four. His counting system worked. Ah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're here. Hey, your next pickup's on the 10th floor. Everything to the first floor, quickly. Pepe El Loco will be here any second. Hello, my name is Pepe. Oh, is that for me? Uh -huh. <gasps> my gadget. Oh, thank you. Now, to get to the ninth floor for my show. Introducing the world's greatest clown, Pepe El Loco, and his mystery gadget. Ah! Wow. <laughs> and it was all made possible by George. A monkey you can really count on. <laughs> so, is it he? I believe so, Your Highness. Your Highness? What? You are in the presence of Her Royal Majesty, the Princess of Bratsvia. So now... We bow. Wow, a real princess in our lobby. And now we oh. leave. 
Uh, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you can't walk away with Hundley. Oh, we got carried away. This may be a descendant of the royal dachshund of Bratsvia. Huh? A royal doggy. I always knew he was special. <laughs> we must adjourn to the royal quarters and complete the test. Only if I come with you. <laughs> You're both more than welcome, especially the fuzzy <laughs> monkey. <laughs> <laughs> He weighs much more than a helmet. He is not royal. Uh, shouldn't we weigh him without the monkey? <laughs> <gasps> They're the same! He is royalty, beyond question. <laughs> You're one special dog, Hunley. Not Henley. His name is Lord Percival Barkington the 15th. Percival Barkington? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> and now Lord Percival can take his rightful place in his new home. Ooh, new home? <laughs> you want us to live here? Not you. Just Lord Percival. <laughs> <laughs> Hunley? Without me? Was he really four stripes long? <laughs> that guy must have had some strong neck muscles to wear this. Weighed the same too. Hundley matched all the measurements. George never noticed that mark on Hundley before today. It smelled like jelly. Percival, are you all right? There was no time to look for soap. Is something wrong? A fuzzy monkey! Oh, do I get him too? Uh, no, Your Highness. Now he will go. <laughs> Wait, look! Lord Percival's royal birthmark has vanished! Impossible! That would mean. He's, He's not, not Lord, Lord Percival, Percival after, after all. all. <laughs> <laughs> so, we made a mistake. Huntley must return to his old life. You hear that, boy? Don't be too sad, Huntley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't be too happy, either. Please accept our gift of the Royal Bratsfee and Leek and Gravy Hoagie. Uh, uh, A dog's lobby was his castle. And for Hundley, even better than a real castle. Natural Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wybicus. Wow. How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wybicus was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Besame. Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. 
Hole win, coxswain. Oh. <laughs> oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old-time captain? <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned, Captain Hundley. No other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. <laughs> Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. <laughs> no one knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. No? The wind was so strong, the pirates were upon the dignified before Captain Hundley could give orders. The pirates were led by... Yellow Hat the Pirate. He's famous, you know. Hi, how are you? We're uh, taking over your ship because of... Uh... Well, you know, that's, that's what pirates do. But the most undignified thing wasn't putting Captain Hundley in his own brig. It was this. Who are you? <coughs> <laughs> I like you already. <coughs> Come on out and have fun with us. <coughs> George wanted to hang it up where Captain Hundley could enjoy it. <laughs> then George got an idea about how he could really help Captain Hundley. Are you down here? Oh, my goodness. I mean, R. Wake up. Uh, put on life vests. We're, we're filling with water. Sinking. We, we, we got to get back to our own ship. <laughs> Captain Hundley used the wind perfectly, and they set sail. George! George! <laughs> hey, that, that sounds fun, doesn't it, George? <laughs> Say, Hunley, your good pal George is going to come out on the boat with us today. <laughs> At least Hunley knew what to expect, so he was prepared. <laughs> For City Heritage Week, the man with the yellow hat repainted the Endless Park statue. <laughs> and George helped. Oh, missed a spot. <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> ah, my yellow hat! <laughs> Thank you, George. What are you looking at? Spider webs? 
Well, spiders spin those webs with special spider silk. They live there. Uh huh, and the webs catch their food. Ooh, ha, 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 ha. Hold it. Ooh. Spiders don't eat apples. They eat small insects and flies. <coughs> George didn't want to eat flies, but he likes spider webs so much Ooh. that he wondered why he couldn't make a monkey web which would catch monkey food. Oh, no. If it's caught in your web, it's yours to keep. <laughs> oh, no. This is going to be ruined. <laughs> George, are, are these to cover the statue? <laughs> wow. You even brought plenty of extra strong tape so it won't blow away. Thanks. You really saved the day. <laughs> George, let's get home before we get caught in the rain. Oh, hey, what's this? <laughs> well, that is a pretty good monkey web, George. <laughs> It looked good, but could it catch anything? No! Oh no! Oh! Uh, can we help? Oh yes. Please, this is my grandfather's collection of antique postcards. They're priceless. We'll never get them all. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, it's hopeless. The museum wanted to display them. Now they're going to be lost. <laughs> oh, my, what luck that this big, sticky web thing was here. Oh, that wasn't luck. That was a monkey. <laughs> oh, Rain, I've got to recover that statue now. Oh, and I'd better get these to the museum fast. Thanks again. The spider webs had to be saved from the storm, too. <laughs> Making webs was hard. George was impressed little spiders could do such amazing things. George got rid of the rainy day and gave him a sunny mountain view. The world was full of surprises. But George never imagined anything like this. This was the museum's first robot exhibit. So, what do you think, George? I want ten. This one has a delicate enough grip to perform surgery or do this. Ooh. 
Now, over here are examples of what people imagined robots would be. <laughs> this is where we'll put your rare models. You will have them here before the opening tonight, right? Oh, sure, I'll bring them back after I take George home. Thanks. Here, you can drive the Mars rover out. Wow! Hunley sure loves that. Okay, George. I have to take that with me. Thanks. I'll see you later. I never knew Hunley liked robots so much. That's how George got the idea to make a robot for Hundley to play with. It worked. Hundley thought George was a real robot. <laughs> Being robotic for a whole hour was tiring. George was ready to get out of that thing. But he didn't want to ruin it for Hundley by letting him see the robot wasn't real. Since he couldn't reach the button, George decided to relax and wait till the elevator came. Oh, hi, Professor. Hi, I just came to pick up a small red robot. You mean the one in the lobby? <laughs> he said two inches tall, but I guess he meant uh, two feet. There was the elevator. Finally, George could go home. Uh-oh, I left it right here. Oh, no. Someone must have kicked it. Check the floor. I don't think you could kick that thing across the room. Oh, sure you could. It's only two inches tall. You mean two feet. I know the difference between inches and feet, Professor. There's a runaway robot upstairs. It's small, red, and says XF-17 on the side. You got the controls? What controls? It has no moving parts. Ah! George, Professor Wiseman brought you to the museum because she thought you were my XF-17. Oh. <laughs> yeah, your outfit's so good you almost ended up on exhibit. Hey, that's a great idea. Huh? huh? We promised an XF-17 model. We never said it wouldn't be monkey-powered. <laughs> and that's how George became a museum exhibit for a day. <laughs> Bedtime in the city. When all little monkeys like to hear a good story. Of all the bedtime stories, Double O Doggy was George's favorite. It's a super spy's job to discover secrets, and Double O Doggy is the best. <laughs> he has lots of tools to help him. <laughs> oh, that's a periscope, remember? <laughs> well, inside the tube are two mirrors. The mirror at this end reflects whatever it's pointing at to a mirror at this end. That way, Double O Doggy can see things without being seen himself. <laughs> All right. Good night, little spy monkey. <laughs> the next day, George started practicing to be a super spy like Double O Doggy.
George, if you have any paper to recycle, put it in this bin, okay? Um, George? <laughs> a super spy needed a spy name. George became... Ah. Double O Monkey. Ooh. Professor Wiseman, I, I was wondering... Can we meet an hour later? A super spy had to be smart, quiet, and quick with his hands and feet. There's this thing I want to get for George. He is going to love it. <gasps> Sometimes super spies had to go undercover. Oh, great. See you then. He'd only been a super spy for two minutes, and Double O Monkey already had his first spy mission. Find out what the man with the yellow hat was going to get him. <laughs> it took a while to get the angle of the periscope just right. going to need something to hold it all together. <laughs> At last, Double O Monkey had his spy periscope. <laughs> and not a moment too soon. Except maybe Charky. his eye on the man with the yellow hat now. You know, it, it's not nice to spy on people. <laughs> and it can ruin surprises like this. <gasps> now, do you want an official double O doggy periscope, or would you rather just make another one? You're a super spy monkey. You need lots of ways to keep your eyes on things. Tracy taught her chicks to walk tall and be proud like a chicken. Time for a bath because in being proud like a chicken, neatness counts. George, would you come here, please? Ah <laughs> the 
neighbors will be here soon for our monthly game lunch, so I need you to run to the store. <laughs> We're out of toothpicks. It's not a party if you don't pick up small food with toothpicks. Uh-huh. Oh, we need marshmallows, too. And a new deck of cards. You, uh, you got some jelly on the old deck. <laughs> so take this list to Ada and Luke's general store, okay? <laughs> that sounded like a chicken in trouble. <laughs> George could see those six chicks needed to be rescued. <laughs> now all the chicks had to do was walk across. <laughs> Bridge wasn't chick safe yet. <laughs> what could he do to make it safer? <laughs> that bridge had sides made from triangle shapes. George suggested they cross one at a time, in case the bridge wasn't strong enough to hold them all. But the bridge was plenty strong. It even held a whole hand. A job well done. George could now rush home with the marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards. Maybe not straight home. <laughs> that must be some party if you need more marshmallows, toothpicks, and cards already. <laughs> now it's officially a party. <laughs> All righty. We're going to play goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, come see what the chickens built. They are geniuses. We better start looking at colleges. And that's how the Rankins College Fund for Gifted Chickens got its start. There's nothing Hundley loved more than a clean lobby. He only wished that monkey felt the same way. Oh, sorry about that, Hundley. Is that all of it? It's not even half of it. Ah, 301's doorbell is stuck again. Don't worry. Hunley will show you to the basement. Great. George, I'll go upstairs for more boxes. Why don't you and Hunley find a spot for them? Hundley decided to find a place for Georgia's stuff. <laughs> it occurred to Hundley that this was the first time he'd been in the basement by himself. <laughs> now, where did that ball go? A good lobby dog is fearless. 
George was right. You should save everything because you never know when you might need it. To help pinpoint the noise, George divided the basement into four sections. He recorded the creepy noise in each of the four sections. George played the recording and listened closely. <laughs> now they knew the noise was coming from the part of the basement near the boxes. No, 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 after you. Huh? Hundley had enough. He was tired of being afraid. This is a cow. <laughs> Cow. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Aw, Hundley must be the bravest dog in the city. Woo! Woo! <laughs> well, let's get the rest of those boxes down here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you learned noises are nothing to be afraid of? <gasps> you don't shed the. Maybe we should keep your stuff upstairs, George. You never know when we might need it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, help! Attention! Attention! Help! The man with the yellow hat's hat was special. But what made it so special? George, come on, it's time to go. When I put my hat on, I'm all ready to head out the door. What? Huh? What? <laughs> okay, George, that was funny, but you know the rule. No one is allowed to play with the yellow hat. <laughs> George sure liked that yellow hat. <laughs> <laughs> what made the yellow hat so great? <laughs> it was just plain fun. George, I need to wear the hat for an important speech at the museum. Please don't play with it. <gasps> That's what George wanted. A fun hat that he could play with. <laughs> George wanted his fun hat to be more than just a normal hat. And in conclusion, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah etc. So forth and so on. <laughs> well, that's some hat and yellow. <laughs> Can I see? Boy, 
This is one fun hat. <laughs> wow, if I could have had a hat like this, I may never have gotten my yellow one. <gasps> oh, ah. That was the best thing anyone ever said to George. <laughs> you want me to have it? <laughs> this is the best thing anyone ever gave me. Surprisingly comfortable. Oh no, I'm late. George, I've got five minutes to get to the museum for my speech. I, I have to make a good impression. George was tempted to play with the yellow hat. But the man had asked him not to, because he needed to wear it to give a very important speech uh? at the museum. Uh. Oh, boy. Uh. Uh. Uh, Professor Wiseman asked me to speak today about the scientific method. <laughs> Of course, we've all heard the saying, what goes around comes around. Um, haven't we? Um, did I say something wrong? No, continue. This is fascinating. Whoa, what stuck to my hat? Oh! I'm wearing George's... <laughs> Actually, I, I can explain. The scientific method is about thinking creatively, taking chances, and being willing to fail. And you made that point very dramatically. I did? Oh, so modest. Now, where can I get a hat like that? Well, George made it. I want one. I want two. <laughs> and that's how George got his picture on the museum wall.